my name is Tom McCoy and I am a cinematographer based out of Arizona. Today I'm going to be bringing you a tutorial on how to edit a stills photographed time lapse using After Effects, After Effects CS6. Now this tutorial should work in just about every After Effects version, but I'm going to be using CS6 because that's what I have. Um, so a couple of things before I, before I start, um, what I'm going to say is related to the tutorial. First being that this is not an HDR time-lapse tutorial. That is something a little bit different. It involves bracketing and all kinds of other stuff. This is more of a beginner's time-lapse editing tutorial. So if you're looking for HDR, um, I advise to go to somewhere else. Um, if you're still here and still watching, um, the second thing I want to say is most of my subscribers are Sony Vegas-based editors, um, but I am doing an After Effects tutorial. Reason being is that for one, I'm going to be doing more After Effects tutorial tutorials as well, as well as Premiere and things like that. But After Effects basically has everything I need to make a clean, professional looking time lapse. Um, I do advise that users who use Sony Vegas to try this out before going to my Sony Vegas tutorial, which I'm going to upload at another time. Because you can do more things in After Effects like stabilizing footage if you're um, time lapse is jittery or something like that, you can actually stabilize that in After Effects. Whereas in Sony Vegas, you may need to use another program and lose render quality and things like that um, by only using Sony Vegas. And I will be going in depth, so if you've never used After Effects before but you have it, um, you should be able to follow this tutorial just fine. Um, but if you're hardcore Sony Vegas only, I'll have a tutorial for that. It just won't be as nice looking, I don't think. Um, so, also before I start, I just want to talk about time lapses a little bit. Basically what a time lapse is, is a certain period of time sped up into just a few seconds. Everybody knows that. Um, but there is two ways of shooting a time lapse. Uh, well, two major ways of shooting a time lapse. I don't really know of any more. Um, first being you shoot a video and you speed it up in post. You can do that in just about any editing program. If that's what you want to do, that's fine, but that's not what we're going to be going over today. In this tutorial, I'll be going over a stills photographed time lapse. What that means is that every picture you take in a certain amount of time um, converts down to every picture is one frame, 24 frames per second for however long you shot the video for. So I shot, I don't know, like 800 pictures or something like that in an hour on the mill, um, I shot, so my intervalometer was set to um, a five second exposure for every two seconds for an hour. And I think that compresses down to actually 22 seconds, one frame, 24 frames per second. Um, it's a little complicated if you don't know the terminology, but it is very easy. I'm gonna show exactly how to do it. And also in the description, I will give you guys my time lapse that I shot um, minus the end of it because my, my lens fogged up because it got really cold outside. So I'll cut that out of there. But um, I will give that to you guys to kind of mess with. Um, so you guys can see exactly what I did and follow along as you edit if you want. So with all of that being said, I'm going to start the tutorial now. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to our left hand corner and click on file, import file. And I have all my clips right here saved in a files folder. <laughs> um, so just click on your first image and drag all the way down and click on your last image. These other three aren't part of the time lapse. So uh, that's just other stuff I shot on my way to my car. Or actually, I was on my way to Chipotle, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, so we have all this selected now. So press shift and select the last one. If I didn't say that, I don't remember if I said that or not. Um, and then just press open and it's going to start importing every single picture it takes a little bit especially on my computer because my computer sucks um, I need a new one I'm actually going to be getting a Mac I hope so I don't know exactly what to say while this imports but I suppose I'll just wait okay that finished <laughs> okay so the next thing we're going to do if you don't know how to make a new composition, most Sony Vegas users call it a workflow. 
um, I guess workflow can be, be for After Effects too, but um, a timeline in After Effects is called a composition. Um, so this is the new composition uh, icon. It looks like a little 35 millimeter film. I don't know, my screen's kind of small. I can't exactly tell what it is, but um, we're gonna drag all these clips onto there. So just drag and put it right on that icon and a menu will pop up. Um, so we're gonna create a single composition using the dimensions from everything that we have just imported. And the stills duration, this is actually very, very important. This is how long every picture is a frame for. So stills duration right now is one frame for every picture. I wouldn't advise going anything over two frames because it will make it look laggy jittery and it won't look good if you do let's say three frames it will not look good i don't even do stills duration for two frames i only do one because i always play it safe it looks a lot smoother that way for me but if you want to do a stills duration for two frames that's fine um but we are in this tutorial going to be doing one frame 24 frames per second so sequence layers just like that that's fine we're going to move on just press ok and it's going to put all this onto one timeline and then uh, once that goes, we can start to move forward a little bit. Okay, so as you see, this is the picture right here. It's M formatted. I shot on a Canon camera in the M format. Um, so it is three by two. And um, we have all of those pictures right here, one frame each until it ends. So you could render this out and use it as a time lapse, but I really advise not doing that. So before we move on, the next thing I want to check is go up to composition and go to composition settings and make sure that this is set to 24 frames per second. Um, the standard really is 23.976, which is 2398, which most people call 24. So 23976 is where you want it basically. Um, so that looks fine. Press OK, and the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pre-compose everything that's in here and put it on a new composition. Now, if you've never used After Effects before, just follow me, it's very simple. However, you might get confused. Um, this is our composition right here. So everything that's in here is 690 right here. This is basically the composition. So if we drag this and put it onto the new composition, then it's going to put everything that was on here into one timeline, one clip. Now, if you don't understand that, let me just explain it one more way. If everything you do over here directly affects what happens over here. So if I make this track invisible, it's now invisible over here. However, what you do over here does not affect what happens back over here. So if I make this invisible, it's still on this composition. So it's basically taking everything from what's over here and putting it over here in a cleaner form. You don't lose resolution or anything like that, so don't worry. So hopefully that's clear um, before I move on. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create this composition and put it in an internet form. So 1920 by 1080. Um, and we're also going to crop it down and basically make this three by two image into 16 by nine or actually I'm gonna be using two to 35 by one, but that's a little bit different. Okay, so we're going to go up to the top corner and go on composition, composition settings, and we're just gonna change this stuff right here. So the width we're gonna to change to 1920, and the height we're gonna make 1080. Um, that's what most people will be using for this tutorial. Um, I'm actually going to use 1920 by 817, which is the aspect ratio you guys actually saw in the preview, which was in the beginning of the video. I'm going to be going to be making it exactly like that, minus you know the little effects and blurs and things I added in there. But everything else would be just about the same. Um, and this aspect ratio is an actual standard film aspect ratio, two by 35 by one cinescope. That's what a lot of movies are in so it looks very cinematic it looks very good um, I'm also gonna bring the duration down to eight seconds just for the tutorial I don't want to have all that other space in there 
um, it'd just be a lot easier for me to work with. And our frame rate is also still at 23.976, so everything looks good here, and we're gonna move on. So this is fit up to 100 right now. This is what our composition looks like. Um, as you can see, the image is very cropped and zoomed in. We don't want that. So if I zoom out, oh, I don't know about that much. Not even like that, what the heck? Okay, this is where our image is. It's much larger than our composition, so we're actually gonna have maximum um, quality because we're gonna be scaling down rather than scaling up. So if we take this and just click on the corner and press shift, and we just drag down and fit it there. Um, all that did was just scale down to fit the uh, aspect ratio that we're using. So we're actually getting pretty good quality. Um, and if you want to reposition this a little bit, recompose it, just click on the clip and press P and you can move up, down, side to side, whatever you want to do. Um, so let me RAM preview this for you guys real quick. And as it's going, you can already see um, that it is a little jittery. So I could basically render this now and say, this is my time lapse, but I'm not gonna do that. So the next two things I'm gonna talk about is stabilizing a time lapse and also uh, adding a camera move. Um, I don't actually add a camera move. You can basically just, you know, pan and crop it or whatever. But if you know how to stabilize in After Effects with Warp Stabilizer, just go ahead and leave this tutorial because um, if you know how to do that, you don't need to watch the rest of this, just honestly. But if you don't and you wanna learn exactly what I did on the um, footage in the beginning, then go ahead and stay. Um, so obviously there it is jittery uh, you can kind of see, you know, this building is moving, you know, everything is moving, and that's because I shot my time lapse with image stabilization on, because I wanted to show you guys how to um, fix jitteriness. And I think also at one time I kicked my tripod on accident. I'm stupid, basically. I, should, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> it was an accident, but it happened. Um, but, you know, things happen, and we're gonna learn how to fix that. So, I'm not gonna pre-compose this because I wanna be able to recompose my bigger image if I can. So, um, next we're gonna stabilize. So, just go to your effects and presets. And if you don't have effects and presets over here, just go to a window and click on effects and presets and it will pop up over here somewhere. Um, but I have it, so just type in warp stabilizer, warp stab, whatever, um, and just grab this effect and put it on your clip. And something will pop up over here if my computer decides to. Okay, I'm gonna cancel it for now. I'm not gonna go in depth about stabilizing using warp stabilizer. I might do a tutorial on that at another time, but I will show you exactly what I'm gonna do here. Um, I usually start my smoothness off at 75 and see what that looks like. And I never use subspace warp because it's ugly and I use position scale rotation. So just so you understand what this is going to do, um, it's basically going to pan around to stabilize the footage, just like this. Um, that's basically all warp stabilizer is going to do. So. If you have a very jittery, very um, moving around time lapse, then you can go to advanced and do a detailed analysis. But for the tutorial, I'm not gonna do that. Um, so I'm gonna click on analyze and it might take a while. So I will come back to this tutorial when it ends because I don't want you guys sitting around forever waiting for this thing to stabilize. So I will be back. Okay, so the stabilization is now done. It took a while, actually. Or at least it felt like a while. But um, as you can see, everything looks pretty smooth now um, that our eyes can see. When it loops back around, it kind of jerks a little, but um, it looks pretty nice. So the next thing we're gonna do, and the last thing we're gonna do actually is add a camera move. 
Um, so I'm just gonna stop that real quick. I'm not even gonna pre-compose it, I don't really care. Um, so I'm just gonna click here and press S, and you no, know, you know what? I am gonna pre-compose this because my scale is weird. So just take um, image 691, not 690, because that's right here. We want image 691 composition and drag that onto here. And okay, that looks good. And just press here and press S and make sure the timeline is good. Uh, keyframe in the beginning, I'm gonna make this 110. And then at the end, let's say, I don't know, let's say this is the end. Actually, I'm in five seconds. Um, just add 100. And play that through. And we have a nice little camera move. You can actually add in a camera if you know how to do that. But honestly, I think it looks the exact same as this. So I always do this. So that's pretty much it. Um, that's how you make a time lapse. Um, it looks pretty fast. Well, my intervalometer was set pretty fast, but and it looks really smooth. It looks pretty professional, and when you render it out, I mean, obviously with the color grade and everything like that, it's going to look a lot better. Um, the preview quality isn't that good, but if you were to render this out, it would basically look like what you guys saw on the preview. Um, I did everything step for step exactly the way I did it for that. Um, obviously, with my tutorials, you can always kind of add different things to them. I've gone back at my tutorials and um, I look at them now and I'm like, I kind of do that a little bit differently now. So obviously this is just a, a, a general idea of how to do things, but um, you can always change things. So if you like this tutorial, please like and leave a comment and give me some feedback on uh, how I'm doing. If you don't like me, um, try to be nice about it. Um, if you do, um, tell me. Uh, I'd really like to know how I'm doing and I do want to do more tutorials soon. I am still very busy, but I am trying to make time for tutorials and I'll have a Sony Vegas one of this coming soon. Uh, not as in depth and not as um, nice looking, but it will be a tutorial for Sony Vegas um, and hopefully more in the future. So thank you guys so much. Everything you need is in the description. Um, if you watch this before I get it in there because it kind of takes a little bit, uh, just come back later. And also in the description, there, there will be some, um, I'm sorry, there will be some tutorials on how to shoot a time lapse. In the future, I might do some tutorials on film stuff uh, because I've learned a lot that you guys can't even see on my channel. So I hope to do tutorials like that soon. But in the description, there is stuff on how to shoot a time lapse. Um, I'll probably put two or three different versions in there. But there is some awesome stuff. And soon, I'm going to be doing a time-lapse competition, I hope. Maybe. So this will be something great to refer to when you're going to do your time-lapse. So thank you guys so much, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.